We're talking today about how to best use your Energizer Home Power Monitoring System. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here. You can look at a bunch of data and you can also decide to charge your battery from the grid and set a reserve capacity. So we'll go through those things today. Starting off, you need to create your Energizer Home Power account. I've already got one sorted, but you can log in via Apple, Facebook, or Google, which you can see down the bottom here. And you need to click create an account to make an account in the first place. So when you log into your account, you still need to link your battery to your account. Now, when we first set up your battery, we'll send you an email that gives you a verification code, which helps you with this process. When you first log in and you don't have anything linked, this will come up as a pop-up. And make sure you have your verification code handy. So now I have linked my Home Power site, my Home Power battery, to my Home Power app. We're looking at the dashboard right now. You can see the total percentage that we are all charged up. It's the middle of the day, so we're at 92%. The status is on grid. Charging power currently is 1.3 kilowatts and it's online, basically meaning that it is connected to Wi-Fi. Scrolling down, we can see that there is a bit of a weather forecast coming up. If you look at the little lines at the bottom of the app, you can see there's an insinuation of more pages. So if you swipe, to the left, then you can see these other pages as well. And it's all daily summaries of yeah, grid import, grid consumption, battery usage, battery consumption, and household energy consumption as well. So those are daily summaries of what is happening today. And you can toggle the date at the top right hand side corner. So you can see on the 1st of June, the system created 15.4 kilowatt hours of energy. If you want to look through the monitoring a little bit further, the page that I rate the most is the power diagram. So if you click that burger menu on the top left hand side, you can see power diagram three tabs down. And this shows you a breakdown of exactly what is happening on your site right now. So if we go back a day so we can get a full day's worth, now we can see all the bits and pieces that are happening on site. And if you look down the bottom, the different colors show the different types of energy we're looking at. So you can toggle the different colors. So if we only want to see the home power charging, we leave that blue. And so just before eight, there was a little bit of charging. And at the middle of the day, when the sun is at its highest, it was charging a bit more. So if we want to look and see when the battery was discharging, we'll toggle that color. We can see just after eight o'clock, there was a bit of discharging. And then later in the evening, as you would imagine, when the sun is going down, the home power was discharging. So make sure you toggle those different colors to see what's going on. So that's how much of the grid energy this site used, how much energy they were using on site in general, and how much solar energy they were getting as well. So that should usually reflect a bit of a curve. If we're looking at the energy flow tab, which you can see is just below dashboard, this is something that raises a few questions, um, but it can show you if anything is wrong on site. Um, these should all add up to the correct number, right? So the amount you are generating on your roof, at this point, this site is four kilowatts, and then it is charging 1.3 kilowatts to the battery. 2.4 kilowatts is exporting out to the grid and then the site is using 380 watts on site. So that should add up to around 4 kilowatts. Those are the most useful tabs you'll find on the Energizer Home Power app. Uh, there's a lot more that you can get into if you really want to fill out some spreadsheets. So give it a go and have a look around. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is what to do if your net status is offline. How do we reconnect your battery? Something to keep in mind when you're doing Wi-Fi reconnects, it's important to forget your current network. The reason being is you're connecting to a device rather than a Wi-Fi network. And so your phone is always going to prefer a network over a physical device. And it might get a little bit confused and it will hinder your progress of getting this connection done. So step one is looking at your Wi-Fi networks on your device, whether it's Android or iPhone. So when you're looking at the different networks. Something to keep in mind is your Energizer battery and make sure you're standing near it. Your Energizer battery provides a Wi-Fi signal for five minutes and then it doesn't for five minutes. 
and then it turns back on for five minutes. So that's something to keep in mind if you aren't finding the Wi-Fi signal that you were anticipating. If you hold the battery on off button for 30 seconds, it'll turn it off and on again. And when it resets itself, it immediately does five minutes of Wi-Fi signal. So that's something to keep in mind if you're having trouble finding the Wi-Fi network in the first place. So when you're connecting to the Wi-Fi network, it'll always appear as a 10-digit number, and that will be the password as well. So make sure you put in the password. If it asks to use without internet, select yes, because with that prompt, it makes it work a little bit more efficiently. Step three, open your web browser and go to the address http colon forward slash forward slash 10.9. Dot eight dot one. When you go to the site, you will be prompted to enter a username and a password. It is always username home power, no capital letters, and password one, two, three, four, five, six. Heading on to step five, you will see the network configuration for your battery and it'll show you that it is offline. Click on change connection settings to choose a connection type and the connection type we want under step six is Wi-Fi and hit next. Now for step seven, you're going back to your original Wi-Fi, your home's Wi-Fi, and you are going to carefully enter your home Wi-Fi network as well as the password into this Energizer portal you're currently dealing with. And in step eight, once this is entered, select next and apply the settings and allow Energizer home power to connect to the internet. Now we're looking at some trickier settings to be set and that is setting up your battery for manual mode aka when it decides to charge from the grid as well as setting a reserve capacity which help you out in power cuts. So we're going to click on the burger menu which is the top right hand side of the app. Settings and application mode. You can see there's three types of application mode. There's automatic, semi-automatic, and manual. What we're looking to do today is set manual uh, modes. And so that will decide when the battery charges from the grid instead of just the solar. So we're going to hit manual. And we're looking at the maximum state of charge. So we want it to charge up to 100%, right? But you can see that below there are different days of the week. So if we scroll down, we can toggle this as per every single day of the week. Now, if you've got a power provider that gives you free hours of power between certain times, what you're going to do is grid charge. You're toggling that bit on and from a certain time, finishing at a certain time. So maybe it is 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. In this case, we're testing out 3 a.m. till 6 a.m. We put those times in, we say how much power we want it to charge up to, and then we're good to go. You can do two sets of time within a day. With Energizer, you do have to go through every day manually, uh, so it's a little bit fiddly. So you just go through every day, and if you've got a free hour of power every single night at 9pm, you chuck those times in and then hit save. Now looking at a reserve capacity, so hit that burger menu, and we're going to hit reserve limit. Looking at the reserve limit, there are two types of setting. There's the reserve limit on grid, the reserve limit off grid. Now that percentage you've got toggled there is how much will be left in the battery that will not discharge to your home if it is on grid or if it is off grid. If it is off grid, that means you've had a power cut, uh, something's turned off the rest of your system, right? So you want to have a difference between these two percentages, which will be the amount you have left if there is to be a power cut. Let me explain that further. So when you are attached to the grid, power is running from the grid, from your solar, you want the battery to just charge to maybe 20%, right? Because then there's always going to be 20% left in the battery for a rainy day. The rainy day being a power cut, right? So then if the off-grid setting is 5%, there is 15% difference between those two reserve capacities. So that 15% is how much battery charge you have left over ready just in case there is a power cut, just in case your home goes kind of quote unquote 
off grid. So that gives you 15% to work with. Maybe you want more, maybe you want less. Depends on your uh, backup circuits, how much uh, energy you think they'll take in a power cut. And then you hit save and you're good to go.